Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I just want to talk about the AC2 instances and I, I'm going to create a Windows AC2 instance inside an AWS console. So let's get started. I'm going to the AWS console. I'm just opening my browser and search for AWS console here and I'm clicking on AWS management console and then sign in into the console. If you remember, we have already created our account. So I'm going to just type my uh username and password here in order to be able to log into the system and this is the management console that we have if i mean uh and you can see that it's a little bit different right now because of the uh we are right now in at the very beginning of 2019 and aws start adding some uh, new features to the aws and i'll talk about these ones uh before in these menus you always can see that the aws are adding more features but anyway so i'm just going to uh, the compute part and we have different options here. We talked about the compute part before, but technically if you're working as an IT guy, most of the time as a professional person, most of the time you should go to the EC2 instance because this is the virtual servers that you can spin up in the cloud and start using. And uh, we talk about other ones like uh, like light sale. And this one is just, we are managing our virtual private servers. I'll go through this one later in, in a later video. Also, we have something called Elastic Beanstalk, uh, which you can just uh, start using your applications and i would say that light cell and elastic beanstalk they are easier to implement for the people that they have less experience but we will go through the ec2 first and then we'll go and check them to see how they are working and we just take a look at them and we talk about the rest in, in other videos so let's get this started and i go and just click on the ec2 instance and uh, just make sure that you are in the right region so if i go to the right side up here as you can see i am in the us west oregon region uh, i'm sure that you remember that we were talking about the regions and availability zones and all of these settings in the previous videos but anyway just make sure that you are in the correct uh, correct region the one that you actually want to use so after going to the uh, ec2 dashboard you can see on the left side we have a bunch of menus here which will cover most of these settings here and you'll get to used to them but in the middle you have the resources and you can see how many running instances we have and a bunch of other informations and on the right side also we have something called attributes and more information also here and we have something called the uh, marketplace also uh, for this tutorial i'm just going to create my ec2 instance as soon as possible make it a short one to make sure we can just spin up a windows virtual machine inside the aws uh, cloud and we are in the uh, US West region and you can see down here this is the US West region and we have technically three availability zones US West 2A, US West 2B and US West 2C so let's get started and just create the instance here we have the launch instance options I'm going to click on this one in this menu here we are seeing something called AMI Amazon Machine Image so if you're familiar with the IT, uh, consider this as the predefined images, as the base images and as the golden images that the AWS created these ones in advance for us and we can just start using them like cloning a virtual machine and you're good to go. And they're here based on their names, you can just uh, put whatever you like here and search them. And if you scroll down, you can see that there are a lot of... Uh, images here that you can use but don't forget this name ami we will use this one a lot ami is technically uh is just an image so for pr the purpose of this demo i'm just going to type windows here and hit enter and we can see that there are a bunch of windows uh, operating system that is supporting by the aws and uh, the first one is says Microsoft Windows Server 2016. At the time that I'm, I'm capturing this video, which is the beginning of 2019, we have these editions here, uh, like Windows Server 2016 base. This one is with containers, and this one is deep learning, for example. And if you scroll down, even you have some of them with some features installed in advance. Like, look at this one. It's Windows Server 2016 with SQL Server installed, and also SQL Server 2016 is standard so pretty much everything that you like so i'm going to start using the first one i have a bunch of information here that they're useful and you should look at them and we will use them later especially if you want to start coding your 
uh, infrastructure but this one is the AMI ID which is pretty important whenever you want to use this image this is actually the unique identifier that is pointing to this image inside the AWS we have the virtualization type is the HVM and also we can see this this one is uh, eligible for the free tier if you're using the free tier of the AWS but anyway so I'm going to select this one which is just the Windows Server 2016 and you can select it on the right side and then on the second step we can choose the instance type so at the very beginning we are just selecting our AMI image which is do we want a Linux machine do we want a Windows machine or what kind of version we want to use on the second step we are choosing how many CPU we want to add to this image how much memory we want to use and also about the uh, uh, disks that we want to use how uh, these uh, settings should be. By default it says uh, the family is general purpose and we have a, a name called T2 micro here which is technically just having one CPU and one gigabyte of memory and we have something called the EBS storage which we'll, we'll talk about them and there's no optimized available in this one and the network performance is low to moderate. If I scroll down you can see that we have nano, micro, small, medium, large, and we when we scroll down, we are seeing that the number of CPUs are adding, and num uh, we have more also uh, memory, which we have 2x large, which with eight virtual CPUs and 32 gigawatt of memory. These are just general purpose one. If I scroll down, we have some other stuff here that they are actually EBS optimized, which means while well, we talk about the EBS. But even if you scroll, if you don't know anything about these settings right now, if you just hover your mouse, you will see the uh, descriptions that are setting about them and this one also. But technically when it's EBS optimized, it means that it has a better disk and you have better uh, IOPS, IO per seconds on your on your volumes and your disks that are, that are attached uh, to your virtual machines. EBS is just technically a volume that you can attach to your virtual machine. But when you scroll down, you can see that you, you can have more CPU and more memory or then uh, in these ones, for example, we have the T, uh, T3 Nano in compare of the uh, T2 Nano or this one of a T2 Medium. It has two CPU. This one is it has two CPU. Uh, I don't know, four or two gigawatt of memory. This one is the same, but this one has the uh, EBS optimized and also look at the network performance it's up to five gigabits per second so pretty fast so if I scroll down uh, after a while you can see uh, after general purpose we have compute optimized it means that you can have more uh, processor and more memory and look at these settings also we have EBS and then there it's optimized and the network it's up to 25 for these ones are 50 and 100 and finally when we are reaching to some of some other ones like c uh, 5d for example now we have ssd disks and also the performance of the network is pretty high so if i scroll down for example this one is a really uh, it's a beast with 72 virtual cpu and 144 uh, gigabyte of memory and two 900 ssd disks with 25 gigabyte of the uh, network uh, throughput so it's pretty much uh, we are, we are selecting the CPU and memory and then the disk IO and the network performance that we have and we also have some of them that is they're optimized for graphical uh, purposes and you can select whatever you like it's pretty um, common thing when you're talking about um, these um, instance types inside the AWS with different peoples most of the people are aware of these names like X large for X large or what are the differences between the uh, these names but anyway so for the purpose of this demonstration I'm just going to select uh, let's say this one a general purpose one T2 large with two CPU and eight gigabyte of memory with the normal settings to see how it works and when you select one of them you can see here it says this is a, a two CPU and it's 2.3 gigahertz and this is technically the settings that we have I'm going to click on the next button configure the instance detail and in this page we can see more detail related to our settings so let's look at this this page carefully because this is also one of the important ones uh, here the first one says number of instances and I want to have one instance you can select number of instances you want for example if you want to spin up two virtual machines right now you can just go ahead and select two 
And we have something called the uh, auto scaling, which we are going to talk about this one later, but it's technically is that you can uh, expand the number of your virtual machines that you have based on the traffic, based on the different conditions that you have. Let's say you have a web server. Whenever you have more traffic, more uh, CPU utilization, then you can spin up uh, more virtual machines automatically and put them behind a load balancer and you can technically serve the users better. So another option is the purchasing option, which is a request spot instance. We'll talk about the spot instance uh, later, but technically it means that uh, we are going to use free resources on the AWS. Then this is a network. We talked about the VPC before. Right now I just have one default VPC and I'm going to put this virtual machine in this VPC. We can go ahead and create a new VPC right away from here, which is a pretty good thing. And one is the subnet, and we remember that uh, for each availability zone, we have one subnet, and these are the default subnets in default availability zones. You can also create new subnets from here, or you can you can go to the VPC settings and create uh, from there. Another one here is auto assignment public IP address, which it says use subnet settings, and by default, subnet setting is enable. And this means that whenever we are spinning up any virtual machines in AWS, AWS is going to assign a public IP address, a random public IP address to the virtual machine and we can access it directly from the internet, which it could be a good thing or a bad thing sometimes. It depends on our scenario and our configuration that we want to do. We have to check this one actually. Another one is the placement group. And we can, uh, and you can see when I hover my mouse, again, I'm seeing some descriptions. This one, it says launch an instance in a placement group to benefit from greater redundancy or higher network, uh, networking throughput. Uh, so technically it's a group of, uh, so technically it's a group that we can put our virtual machines for having better, uh, performance. Uh, the, uh, the next option is a capacity reservation, which is open right now. And we, we can, we can work on this one. For reserving or capacity i'll talk about about the uh, even reserving virtual machines uh, reserving resources later which you can uh, save a lot of money but uh, I mean, we have to double check with or monitoring tools and uh, with the uh, platforms that we are uh, checking the cpu utilizations and memory utilization on our virtual machines so uh, you can select domain join directory uh, if you have the directory available, which it should be a directory like an active directory instance inside AWS, you can go ahead and join it from here or you can create it right now. Uh, IAM role, uh, if you have any role, you can assign the role right now from this one. And also you can create one from here. It, let's say we have a virtual machine and we want to uh, just give this virtual machine access to a, a uh, storage or another services inside the AWS, then we can create this access and they can see each other. Shutdown behavior is very easy and enable ter uh, termination protection. We can protect it against uh, stopping the virtual machines. For the monitoring tool, we'll talk about the CloudWatch later, but we can we can see some monitoring, basic monitoring right now. I'm going to leave everything with default. That's why I don't want to touch anything right now. And uh, for the uh, tenancy, we can have the shared and dedicated. So dedicated would, would uh, it would be uh, much expensive. For the shared, we are sharing the AWS resources and uh, we start using them. We don't need any graphic acceleration right now. No T2 and T3 uh, uh, unlimited uh, configuration. So in this one, T2 and T3, uh, it's technically it's if you are working in IT or if you are coming from the network background or system administrations, you are familiar with the burst and burst size usually in the network. So you can just give your instance a little bit more room to be able to uh, use more CPU resources, for example. And I mean, technically there would be additional charges. There are some advanced details and advanced settings here. And technically this is mostly useful in Linux environments that you can put some commands that you can run them after uh, spinning up the virtual machine. So some basic settings related to your uh, EC2 instance. So that's it for this lecture. I'm going to continue in a new one and avoid having a long lecture because sometimes it could be worry. So see you in the next one.